Yeah, that's, that's, that's slightly better. I wouldn't say it's massively better. So if you're a follower of mine and you've clicked on this video, I have to tell you that I made it because my previous LG Ultra Gear review that I did made some pretty bold claims when it came to the GP83B versus the GP850 and which one is better. So today I'm actually gonna put my bold claim to the test with you with this GP850 and tell you if I think it's better, this isn't a comparison video. This is a review of the GP850, but, but if you stay through the end, I'm going to tell you whether I think the extra money's worth it for this guy right here. So this bad boy right here isn't massively different from the GP83. In fact, it has almost the exact same specs. Out of the box, you're looking at a nano IPS, 165 hertz, one millisecond response rate, G-Sync panel that has FreeSync Ultimate as well, by the way. It's of course a 1440p HDR 400. It has overclock mode to 180 hertz and it has a motion blur reduction at one millisecond response rate. When you open the box, you get your power cable, display port, HDMI, you get a good stand, sweet looking stand in my opinion. That passive radiator they have in the back, that passive cooling is sweet. I love the look of it. And the placement of all of the IO ports right next to there is the sweet spot when you're plugging things in and out. Now, as previous generations told us, it has a good height adjustment. It has tilting and rotation, which isn't something that you get with every single monitor out there. And it looks good in its portrait mode, by the way. Now, if you're looking at the IO on the back and you're like, hey, does this have the ins and outs that I need in order to use it for my everyday use, whether it's PC, console, creating, I don't know, it could be all of those things. What you can find on the back is, of course, your display port, two HDMIs, two USB 3.0, and one USB 3.0 upstream to be able to link up all of those peripherals that you have. And then of course it has its headphone jack, but there is IO galore on the back of this thing. So I can tell you out of the box, this guy's gonna be a beast when it comes to connecting two devices that you currently have. But that's enough about the unboxing and the aesthetics of this monitor. If you guys have watched my channel whatsoever, you know that I've reviewed probably about four or five different Ultra Gear monitors, the GN850, the GP83, the GN50, the G, I don't know. I can't tell you all of them, but there are plenty there that we have reviewed. So what I'd like to do is, is jump into the setup here. Uh, but if you haven't watched my channel, know that I get pretty in depth when it comes to pixel response rate, motion capability, color, contrast, clarity, and all of the above when it comes to gaming. So we're gonna dive into each individual topic, starting with the menus and the setup. So much like the GP83, they've updated the menus here, and there's some quick access buttons that you can get to just right off the button at the bottom. But again, the button at the bottom is just this tiny little joystick, and there's no other way to control your menus here, albeit the menus are nice and easy to navigate. Now, cycling through some of the presets, the presets themselves are pretty dang good. Uh, they're reliable to a degree, but they aren't gonna be the best that you can get. And it's no different for any other monitor. I never like the presets within the menus. Now, within the menu and the game adjust tab, you're gonna notice that there is an additional setting compared to some of the other LG GP monitors out there, and that is going to be the overclock setting. This setting, when turned on, allows you to turn on that full 180 hertz overclock that this monitor is capable of, and that is the key difference between this and the GP83. Hold on to your seat because we are gonna test that lightning fast 180 hertz at one millisecond response time. So something on the one millisecond motion blur reduction is that it doesn't actually work in every possible setting that you can have on this monitor. And in fact, you have to turn off your variable sync in order to get the one millisecond motion blur reduction to enable. And when you do, what I noticed is there's actually this flicker to the screen when that happens. 
So I don't know the exact technology that they're utilizing to make this happen, but I wanna mention it now because in the setup process, I was messing with the different settings and how to unlock them all. You have to disable all variable sync technology in order to get that one millisecond motion blur reduction, which is kind of a downside because you're losing that variable refresh rate technology in order to get a smoother picture with your pixel response rate. Doesn't quite line up for me. Those two technologies I believe have to be together, but we'll talk about it later. Otherwise, I was quite happy that when I plugged it in, whether it was HDMI, DisplayPort, it pretty much adjusted to what I needed, whether it was console or PC. And getting those settings changed from 165 to 180 hertz was actually very, very easy. There wasn't this crazy workaround within minimal, you know, setup for performance, only that one millisecond motion blur reduction. So of course, as I always do, I open up my Borderlands 3 and I give this guy a good calibration. Now I'm not comparing it to previous models when it comes to color at this point, uh, but it did perform as I would expect when it comes to this particular monitor. There was no real downside for me here. The calibration and color popped. You know, the contrast was good. The clarity was good. Regardless, we're gonna test that a little bit further later. I do have three games we're gonna be testing out. But before we do that, let's get into the Blurbusters testing that I did. And I mixed it up a little bit this time so we can test a bit further. So let's jump into it. So we're about to get into the nitty gritty here. And I have to tell you that this is my favorite part because it's just a good insight into how this monitor may perform for you in game, but it is not a representation of how your game performance will be. But before we get into all this nonsense about pixel response rate and refresh rate and all that good stuff, I wanna let you know that we have a great channel built out for you. Tons of content, probably 90, 100 plus videos for you to check out all broken down into playlists. So go to that homepage of Texessory, find one of those playlists and check it out. Definitely, of course, hit the subscribe button uh, because we appreciate when you do that and it keeps us going. So thank you to all of you who have. Let's jump in to the pixel response rate test from Blurbusters. Shut up and sit down. So as I said, I did things a little bit differently here and I gave us a wider range of refresh rates. And as you can see here, we have 10 all the way up to 165. Just pausing on one of the worst frames here, what we see down at 10 is actually pretty dang good performance. Going up the ladder there, we have right at 41 frames per second. We're seeing a bit of ghosting, same with the 83 frames per second, a bit of ghosting. And then 165 is looking pretty solid here. Not perfect, but it's looking solid. Moving right along, I'm pretty dang impressed, man. All the way up from 10 to 165, we're seeing great performance with a teeny, teeny, teeny bit of ghosting at that 21 frames per second, but I couldn't be happier with the performance here so far. And dropping in six of those guys from 5.2 frames per second all the way up to 165. Uh, the pixel response rate is struggling there. Anything below about 20 frames per second to be expected. But it's holding up pretty, pretty well above 40 frames per second. We're not seeing much ghosting at all. And uh, that's much better than some of the GN series that we've seen. I'm not going to compare it to all the other monitors that we've reviewed. But the performance here is looking solid. So getting into the world motion blur testing here, this is a synthetic bench test on what it would be like getting into game and seeing as you pan around what the motion blur is like. I like to test down low on this test because uh, you may not get full 165 hertz in your game. You might actually drop frames. So I want a good test of how this performs at low frames per second because we know that higher frames per second can actually mask a lot of the issues because it's refreshing so fast. And yes, that's considered good performance, but if we know how bad it can do and it performs well under those conditions, then we know that at higher frames per second, it's only going to get better. So jumping into this, we see minimal, minimal ghosting. Now it looks a little hazy, a little, little blurry, but nothing to really be upset about. Pausing again here, it looks very, very, very clear. I mean, even at a lower frames per second, we can see and make out all of the characters, all of the tags above the characters in every image that's going across the screen. And you saw that on my drop down. I'm actually kicking it up, 
putting a bit more information into those frames to see if it can still keep up and refresh. It's doing a pretty good job, even though if I stop it here on this particular scene, it's very blurry. I wouldn't be happy with this in game, this performance. The only question we have to ask at this point is, does this translate into real world performance or lack thereof? Now, I'm not upset with this because again, if I get higher frames per second in game, it's gonna clear a lot of this up. But I have more testing and we are gonna open up some real games here in just a minute. So moving on to my favorite part of this testing is the pixel response rate test where I test from all the way off to the fastest setting in pixel response rate. So in this test here, this is exactly what I did. So starting with the pixel overdrive off, one of the first frames that I pause on looks perfect. I mean, it looks fantastic, but I know that can't be said for all of them because if I pause a little bit later, what we see is a bit of ghosting, both in our higher frames and our medium frames here. And of course that seems to be common because I pause it one more time and we get a bit of ghosting in the higher and mid frame settings. So we pump that guy up to normal and what we see is actually a bit of overshoot almost on every single frame here. So as I pause again, I kind of realize that that medium and high frames per second seems to be where this has the biggest challenge. This monitor has the biggest challenge of refreshing those pixels because it's receiving a little too much information to be able to refresh fast enough. But um, I don't think that's a bad thing. We just have to find the right setting of overdrive for this on those frames per second. So moving up to fast, we see similar performance right out the gate. The top and middle frames per second are both getting a bit of ghosting here. It's not terrible. It's a teeny, teeny, teeny amount, uh, but let's see what else we can find here. Wow, and that's the sweet spot I have to tell you. And I know these LG Ultra Gear monitors, I've used them for a long time. And uh, I know that in that higher frames per second category, you have to have fast. Fast has to be on. That's why they added the one millisecond motion blur reduction to this monitor, because at the faster rates and the lower rates, you are going to get a bit of overdrive and, and ghosting happening. But on that fast setting, just like I present right here, it's usually always crystal clear. And we see it here in this image. So a kind of weird thing happened to me here next. I, of course, like you guys, wanted to test out that one millisecond motion blur reduction. But what happened when I turned on the So with that said, let's get into the faster and see, does it actually need that one millisecond motion blur reduction? And I can tell you, just looking at this moving across the screen, it's looking pretty good, actually. As I pause here on this particular frame, we see that the picture is crystal clear from top to bottom. So maybe they did fix that one millisecond motion response rate that they had issues with on previous generations. I mean, we even saw it on the last GP83 review that I did, the faster setting was not all the best and the fast seemed to be better. So that could be one thing that this GP850 actually takes the cake on. And uh, one of the first that I've seen out of the Ultra Gear lineup where that one millisecond actually works. Yeah, the more I look at that, the more I'm impressed with how high the frames can actually go and how well the pixel response rate is in this particular test. But that's not all I really wanna to test today. I do wanna get into some gameplay. So before we do that, be sure to hit like on the video, comment below. Of course, go check out the homepage of the channel where we have tons of playlists. And of course, subscribe if you get the chance because that's what keeps us going and we absolutely wanna keep going here. So I appreciate you guys that have and let's jump into the gameplay. Firing up Borderlands here, the color was pretty good. It popped well, not quite as well as some of the other ASUS monitors that I've reviewed in the past. Uh, but as far as the game goes, it's a bit of a darker game and those neon colors tend to kind of oversaturate to a degree. Calibrating this guy to my liking, it actually performed really, really well. And as always, it's not an extremely fast paced style game. So the motion was good. And you know, if I pause in some of these battle scenes here, it's pretty crystal clear. You know, the performance is good. The color's on point. I'm happy with it. Did it blow my socks off? Probably not in Borderlands 3. I've definitely seen better monitors with color performance on this game. If it sounds like there were any shortcomings to this monitor up to this point, I have to tell you that this particular HDR test that I'm gonna do with Metro Exodus Enhanced is going to 
change your mind. To be quite honest, I wasn't expecting the result that I got here. And I'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons and show you guys what I mean. But let's dive into a bit of Metro Exodus Enhanced. And I wanna show you the color capability that I get with HDR. So jumping into the Metro, I have all my settings maxed out. HDR on, DLSS is on, of course, ray tracing is on. Everything is looking beautiful. And that opening scene, let me tell you, this opening scene on this monitor was breathtaking. So getting going here, as I make my way through this little bit of hallway, what we notice is that ray trace sunlight coming in is actually at a moderate level. It's not too crazy. You're able to make out the detail of the window and kind of the rebar behind it, and it's not blowing out the picture. And then this dark scene here, it's you know crushing a bit of blacks, but it's able to pick up some of the detail pretty well. And the most impressive sight is as I leave that initial walkthrough in the building here, I'm panning around, I'm looking at the tall buildings, and as the sun shines through, I'm getting those nice ray trace lights, picking up a ton of detail. I can make out the skyline, I can make out the detail in the building. And as I switch over to non-HDR, what you notice is almost this blue haze over the panel, and everything is one note. You know, I'm not getting a lot of detail out of the actual buildings. The sun is just this ball of light in the sky. There's no rays coming from it, even though ray tracing is on. So I turn that HDR back on to get a good sense of what it's like in HDR. On this particular scene, what I notice is that sun in the sky actually becomes a sun. It doesn't actually blare in my face unless I stare straight at it. The detail in the buildings, the icicles, the snow forming on the ledges actually looks very clear. And this is impressive. If there was ever a strong point that I could point out about a monitor, for this one, it's not because HDR is fantastic and you know blows the freaking doors off other monitors it's just how good it is for you know the price that you pay and i didn't expect that with this particular monitor but next we're going to get into the motion testing and real world performance in game and of course my favorite to do that with is going to be call of duty and specifically warzone but this test right now is a little bit different than previous tests that I've done using Warzone, and it's because I'm gonna overclock this bad boy to 180 hertz, and I'm gonna play the new season five of Warzone. Now, of course, I've turned off HDR because in this game, I don't think there's a difference whether it's good HDR or bad. It doesn't really make a difference in gameplay, but the colors still look good. That intro scene's always nice. I love the way they edit those. Uh, but let's get into some real gameplay here. And I have a few interactions I'd like to go over, of course. So starting with a few interactions here, you can see up in the corner, of course, my NVIDIA G-Sync is on. I'm getting about 132 frames per second, and I'm scoping in on this guy, and he's moving around, and I'm a pretty terrible shot, so I miss him a few times. But as I track him, his head's popping above the roof line there. And uh, what you can see there, though, is we're making out great detail. We can see exactly where he's at, and I'm tracking him. I'm moving along. I'm not just sitting in one place, even though I'm scoping out of a window and I'm missing him, but we're getting good detail out of this guy at 132, 140 uh, frames per second. So next simple scene that I have is I am scoping in and following this guy who's kind of hiding behind the staircase. As I hit him a couple times in body shots, he goes to take a step back and I end up getting this headshot on him. And we scope in a little bit, we zoom in on this photo and we notice that his character, we're able to make out every single bit of detail out of him. So even as he's moving around and I'm kind of bouncing around with the gun itself, uh, it's making out great detail here. So here's a good scene coming up. I'm on top of bio here and there's a guy right below me. I scope down, I get a headshot on him and we pause in the middle of that scene. We're actually able to make out his character quite well. I get a good headshot because I'm coming up from on top of him. And uh, as I land on the ground here and I down this guy, his partner's gonna come up behind me and get a few body shots. And I'm gonna duck down and then I'm gonna pop my head up. We're making out good detail in his buddy who's coming up from behind me. So if I had been on my game a little bit better, probably would have responded uh, well against his opponent, uh, but I didn't and I got shot, but I was able to make him out the entire time. However, I wanted revenge on this guy. So as I redeploy, I get down into my crouch position within bio and I'm creeping around this corner because I know he's near and all I have is my pistol. But who do I see to the left of me but this person here and I wanna take him out. 
So what do I do? I melee the crap out of him. And as I do, you know, I'm seeing a bit of ghosting, but this is all happening fast. I mean, this interaction takes place in about two seconds flat. Uh, but I know exactly where this person's at. I'm able to melee the crap out of them, down them, and get the kill. And this is my last interaction here. And it's a phenomenal interaction. And I wish I had done better. But in this same match, all my other teammates left because they were getting smoked. And they couldn't hang. So what did we decide to do? Me and the other guy decide to push the team that keeps taking us out. And we know there's two guys in this building here just creeping around. We can hear them and we know they went there. So we start tracking them down. And as I turn the corner to the door here, one of their guys is just walking by, doesn't notice me. And as I stop and I pause on this guy, his character is perfect. And I'm moving fairly quick, but I'm able to aim right onto him. And even as he jumps around, uh, I can see him perfectly. And of course, as I'm wearing my headset, I hear his opponent in the other room. So quickly, I deploy my thermite just to block his buddy from coming out that same door and hitting me from behind as I go around the corner. But instead, he comes up behind me where my buddy's at. So I figured I've got good defense here, and I do. But as I aim down sights, I'm turning rapidly. I mean, this is a 180 degree turn in a fraction of a second, and I'm able to walk onto that target, see him down sights, and quickly make my move even though I get downed. And that kind of sums up that 180 hertz, one millisecond response rate that this monitor can produce. It works extremely well, but it only favors you if you're actually good at the game or doing well in match, because it doesn't really benefit you to be able to clearly see your opponent if you're getting your butt kicked. However, I'm happy and the 180 hertz performed extremely well in the overclock mode. So that's just another benefit we get to add to this monitor. So you guys have listened to me talk for a good amount of time now, and I'm sure it's pretty unbearable. I can only imagine what it's like. Uh, but I do have a little bit more to cover, and I do have to mention that uh, I did get the chance to test this out with the Series X and the Series X. To be clear, that's the S and the X. And uh, there's some good new features that this thing has that other generations and other models don't. So if you want to check out that video and see what that new feature is, especially if you're a console gamer, go to the home page, hit subscribe. It's going to be posting shortly after this one. I do a full in-depth console review and uh, you'll be happy to know the performance increase from previous generations and why this could be your next monitor that you get for your Xbox Series S and Series X. So from the get-go, I was actually pretty ecstatic about getting this monitor because I've used the GN850, the GP83, and uh, of course, I made the big claim that said that the GP850 was not worth the extra $50. I'm going to stick to that claim to a degree. There's a few areas where I think you would actually benefit from spending that extra $50, and we'll cover that here as we wrap up. But I wanna talk about the three kind of downsides of this monitor and then the three most positive things about this monitor. And then we'll make our decision at the end of the video. With that said, let's jump into the bottom three most negative things about this monitor. So the first downside to this is definitely gonna be the price. At $499, it's way too high for this level of monitor. I know things are crazy right now because inventory's slim and uh, everybody's buying stuff, especially gaming gear, but $499 for the performance level that you get off this guy, I think is a little much. And that leads me to the actual performance. So number two is going to be related to Borderlands. The color capability, the contrast, the saturation, it wasn't exactly perfect. And I don't need it to be perfect to be happy, but when you spend $4.99 and you're using non-HDR, you would expect it to perform really, really well. And I reviewed an ASUS monitor not long ago where it performed actually much better than this and the GP83 in that Borderlands test. So why can't LG get it together with their Nano IPS, which is supposed to be phenomenal in 98% DCI-P3 color scale, it just doesn't look as good as I would hope. Which brings me to the last and third downside, and it's more related to the actual form factor itself, their cable management in the back is very poor. It's just a little tab that you can run wires through that doesn't really manage anything for you. It more collects them all in one place, and it's kind of a, a wreck. 
you know, they make up for it because the IO is easy to get to, uh, but their cable management needs some work, especially because they have a pretty big stand, but that's my third. So let's jump into the upsides of this monitor and why it would be a good benefit for you to buy it over some of the other monitors that I've reviewed. So the first is quite obvious, 180 Hertz, one millisecond response rate, and we actually tested that out, performed extremely well. The motion capability, the handling, the G-Sync, they all paired together to give you an amazing experience. And I expected nothing less, let me tell you, absolutely nothing less, and it delivered. Number two is gonna be IO. There's IO galore, just like the M28U. Uh, it has all the ins and outs that you could ever need. Two HDMIs, display port, two USBs, one USB upstream. I mean, it's got everything you need, including a headphone jack. And the third is the utility of this monitor. When I did the calibration and set it up for the first time, it was good in every application that I used from video editing to gaming to 4K content, I didn't have to touch the settings again. And I guess that speaks to the Nano IPS performance and how well it works in every scenario that you throw at it. And it definitely takes the cake against other monitors that I've reviewed. But if I had to give you my opinion on whether or not you should buy this, my answer would probably be no. Go check out the GP83 before you consider buying this, unless you need that 180 FPS or you really, really need the USB upstream capability, then there's not a huge reason to come over here and get this. And even though they've rounded all the edges and given you exactly what you've asked for and performed well in every scenario, you're paying an extra 50 to $100 for just those extra tidbits, maybe a 5% increase in performance overall over other monitors that are four to $450. So it just doesn't make sense for me, even though I love this thing and uh, I would like to keep it, uh, I'm probably not going to because it doesn't beat out the GP83 for cost versus value. Now, there is a scenario where I would absolutely buy this, and uh, you'll have to check out that console video that I am posting up just in a few short weeks. So hit subscribe down below so you get notified when that comes out. And if you're interested in console gaming, I'll tell you why you would buy this over the GP83. So that being said, you guys, I've said enough. You guys have listened to me talk here for a good solid while. So I appreciate you guys that have stuck around and made it to the end. Uh, and I'll catch you in the next video.